a proportion, if you put 123, let's see, move the decimal place on that thing, 123% uh, of the time they guessed it right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, actually, that'd be the wrong way, huh? 12,300% of the time, they got it right. Booyah, it's an awesome touch therapist. You get it right 12,000% of the time. A proportion means something between 0 and 1, doesn't it? So if you're going to give me a proportion here, if we're talking about proportion, which this signifies that we are, let's say 4P, you're talking about a proportion. You give me 123 up here, you don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea what a proportion is. And I know right there, because let me, let me make it real clear for you. In the next three sections, we do something that looks identical. But we're talking about three completely separate things. So if you do not make the distinction between dealing with a proportion and dealing with a mean when you have more than 30 uh, of sample size and dealing with a mean when you have less than 30 sample size, you're going to make huge mistakes on this test coming up, all right? So you need to know when you're dealing with a proportion, when you're dealing with a mean. That's two categories. Then within the mean, I'm, I'm kind of giving you like an organizer for the next this chapter. Within the mean, you'll have two different sections itself. So firstly, are you dealing with a proportion or a mean here? Proportion. Definitely a proportion. It says P right there. Proportions are always between 0 and 1. They're never more than 1. So you can't just put 123 here. That doesn't make any sense. In fact, if you look back at your notes from last time, I told you that p hat was x, which is the number of successes, divided by n. What is n? Trials. That's your trials, or sample size. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. So in our case, p hat is how many successes did you have? What's your x? 23. Good, all right. What is your n? How many trials, basically? That's how you find it. Is that going to be less than one? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, round as little as possible here. What is 123 divided by 280? Well, I heard lots of people say fours and stuff. What, what was it again? 0.4. 3 niner. 2. Three, technically? <laughs> we better be technical on this. Three. Let's go to four decimal places. That way we're going to be pretty sure that we're, we're not going to make any rounding errors on this, all right? Let's go to four decimal places. I mean, proportions, you know that this means 43.93%, right? 43.93% of the time, <laughs> this woman guessed correctly or identified it correctly. If you just did uh, 0.44, well, that might be a little bit too much rounding when you get to this step. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But we want to be sure that we're not rounding too much. If you round too much, notice how if you round this to 0.44, you round your Q a little bit differently, don't you? And then you multiply those things, that's going to round differently. Then you divide by N, differently. Square root, differently. Multiply by this critical value, way off. At that point, you might be way off. I don't know, but you could be. You still with me, folks? Yeah. Are you okay on finding P hat? What does P hat stand for? Does it mean sample population? No. Does it mean sample size? Yeah. It means sample something. Sample what? Proportion. Yeah, this means sample. This means proportion. Basically, if you see something above your letter, it means sample. X bar meant sample. P hat means sample. Q hat means sample. Just know what you're talking about. Okay, great, great. Next thing up was. Uh, Q hat. What's Q hat? Failures. Oh, I love failures. No, I don't like failures. I don't like failures. How do you find it? So in our case, our Q hat is 1 minus 0.4393 or 0 0.5607, something like that. Was I right? Yes. Right. Coffee's paying off today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you also need to find your n. Now, fortunately, if you've done this process, if you found p hat, you also found your n. One more statement uh, that I need to make. Sometimes you're not even required to do this. Your problem could be simpler than this. This is about as hard as it could get because you actually have to find your, your p hat it, itself, okay? So uh, maybe you're reading through your problem and it says, out of 500 people, 60% of them were whatever. Then what's your p hat? 60%. What's your sample size? 500. Did you guys see the difference there? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, sometimes they give it to you in different wording. You've got to read through it. If they're already giving you some percentage or proportion, then you don't have to do this work. 
If they're not, then yes, you might have to do that work. Somehow, you're going to find a number between 0 and 1 if you are dealing with a proportion. Now, you're going to be okay with that. Somehow, you're going to deal with that. Okay, how much is your end? Good. That's the number of trials or sample size, depending on the situation here. Hmm, let's see. What's our next step? Okay, so find the confidence. What's our confidence level? Use that to find your z-score, which is also known as a, what is it called? Critical a value. critical value. Now, you might be wondering, well, Mr. Leonard, why in the world do we only take the positive version, listen to me, the positive version of our critical value? Because on the, on the chart, you had negative and you had positive, right? Why do we only take the, the why are these all, well, what, I erased them, but why were all those positive? Why don't we have any negatives? Notice how we're adding and subtracting? That includes that negative for you. What is the, did you remember it already? The appropriate critical value? I know it's one point something. One point what? Yeah, the common critical value here, or common uh, confidence level here was our, our 0.95. That's already on your chart. Again, if you needed like a 98% confidence level, you would have to look that up. Those aren't common. The common ones that you'll probably memorize are the 90%, 95%, 99%. All right. Other than that, you have to look back at your normal distribution and figure that out. Well, that was easy. Step number three. Step number three says you've got to find your E. E is your critical value, which you just found, times the square root of P hat times Q hat over N. So basically, I set this up so that you can find all the, the pertinent information, plug it into the formula, and figure out how much your maximum difference between P hat and P actually is. Let's see if we can plug these things in together. You all help me here. So in our case, we've got E equals, what's the first number I'm going to put down, please? 1.96. Where are you getting the 1.96? Where is that? Great, okay. Gives us our critical value, sure. 1.96 times, make sure you know that's times, get your multiplying here, but you got to figure out the square root first. Let's see what numbers go inside of our square, square root. What's on the numerator? Where's that coming from? Okay, someone else continue. What do I multiply that by? 5, 6, 0, okay. That's my Q hat. All over how much? Good, very good. Here's how you calculate this in one step if you want to take a calculator job. Right? First thing you're going to do, you're going to plug in 0.4393. Do that now. Without This is going to make it so you don't have to round. 0.4393. Everyone, everyone have that? Press times button. Press 0 0.5607. Press enter. Press divide. 280. You got that? Press enter. You get that down? Now, without clearing anything, some of you are going to be able to press the square root button right now, and it will automatically take the square root of that. So press the square root button now. Some of you have to press second to that. If it gave you square root with nothing inside of it, it either two things happened here. Either it gave you a number. That's how many people did it just automatically give you a number right there? Oh, good. You all have this. It automatically gave you the square root of the inside then, okay? And what you do right now is press times 1.96. That's going to give you your answer. If it popped up square root with nothing inside, you have a button on your calculator that says A and S. It's the negative. What now? It's the negative. Well, it's above the negative. Oh, yeah. you gotta press. <laughs> you got to press second to get there. Press second, <laughs> negative. It should be second. What you're actually hitting is the A and S. That's the stored, automatically stored answer of this thing right there. Do you all have that? It should have pumped in a number into, inside your screen. Press enter. After you do that, press times 1.96. That's a completely unrounded answer that you just got with not writing anything down. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, so I don't want you rounded here. Uh, what did you all get? 0 0.058. Point zero five eight one. I'm sorry. Point zero five. What now? Eight one. Eight one. Notice why we had to be so accurate. Do you see it? Look at that. I mean, point zero five. If you round to the tenth, you're not gonna have any idea what's going on here. These are percentages. These are proportions. Which means we're gonna go to the third and fourth decimal place often. Oh wait a second. What's e? 
No, I, I know it's 0.05 in my I can read But what, what, what's it stand for? Okay, what's margin error stand for? That's the difference between Yes. Here's the interpretation. You need to listen carefully. Stop writing things right now. This right here, our p hat, is called our point estimate. Right now, this is the number that's estimating this population proportion. We have no idea how good this actually is. So what we've done is use the fact that this is normally distributed because we have a large sample size, p times q is greater than 5. I'm sorry, uh, n times q is greater than 5, n times p is greater than 5. That dictates that for you. We didn't check that, but it, it was given. Uh, so that's our point S, but we have no idea how good it is. So we use this normal distribution fact to create some sort of interval. Here's what I know. I don't know exactly, I don't know exactly what this is. I don't know if it's 0.4393 or even close to that. But what I do know is this. I'm 95% sure the maximum difference between this number and this number is this number. That's what I'm sure about. I'm 95% sure that this is the case. So, in step number four, when we do this whole thing, when we do this whole thing, we already know our p hat, so check it out. We write 0.4393 minus 0 0.0581. Do you see where those numbers are coming from? That's our p hat minus our e is less than. Do I fill anything out for this population proportion? No, that's what you're trying to estimate. That's going to stay there all the time. Is less than the same point estimate of 0.4393 plus our e, our maximum allowable distance. Our difference. <coughs> Don't leave it like this. Do the calculation. Do the calculation. Can you tell me, please, somebody, the lower range? The lower range for my P. 0.3812. 0.3812. Yeah. Is less than P. Is less than, somebody tell me the upper range. 0.4974. 49 what? There's two ways that you can represent. There's actually three ways. I'm going to show you the third way. It's kind of irrelevant. You never see it. These are the two ways you represent a confidence interval. This right here, this is it. Is it hard to actually do? Is the math hard? No, math is easy. It's actually just a calculator word. I mean, that, that, that's really it. It's actually the hard part in this, in this whole next two chapters is knowing what you can do and what you can't do. And honestly, it's based on sample size and whether you're looking for a proportion or an average. I mean, that, that's it. If you know you're dealing with a proportion, you do this stuff. Exactly. This is the only thing you have for proportions. This is it. If you're dealing with a mean, we're going to do some slightly different things. It's going to look very similar, but it's a little bit different. You with me on that? So this is option number one for representing a confidence interval. This is a confidence interval. Option number two is this, this way. This way. You can also write option number two. P equals your P hat. 0.4393 plus or minus your E. What's your E? This is option two. Well, there's two options. Uh, I would prefer uh, on your on your.